Hello, my name is Michael Kinsey and in this video I'm going to give a demo of the mass motion pedestrian evacuation model um, and basically demonstrate some of the uh, fundamental characteristics of the model. Um, and to do that I'm going to build an example of a classroom. Um, so here I've opened up mass motion. Um, the first thing I want to do is click on the new button at the top left and that creates a new project. I then want to import my floor plan layout that I want to build. So I'll click on file, import and then geometry and drawings. And that'll open up a, a, a import file dialog box and then I'll go to where I have stored my floor plans, the DWG file from AutoCAD. I'll then open that. It'll then bring up this import options um, and uh, basically you can do all sorts of things in here. So for example, I'll put floor plan as a prefix and then all the lines um, that it imports or the layers will be called floor plan at the beginning. This is useful because I might want to import multiple floor plans into one drawing, uh, into one file. So now I'll click import. I'll then import the floor plan and it'll also give me, it'll then present this properties transform box. Now, sometimes if you import a, a drawing file, um, the scales might be off and like one meter might actually be 10 meters in the plan. So this dialog box allows you to change the scaling or the location. Sometimes the X, uh, the zero, zero coordinates, the origin of the floor plan might be you know, 10,000 or something like that, um, purely because of how the architect has made the drawings. Um, but this is absolutely fine. So all I need to do is click cancel. And then uh, you have, you can see the floor plan. So um, this tutorial you'll need, if you're following me, you'll need an external mouse, a separate mouse, not a trackpad on a laptop. It's a bit harder to do it with that, although it is technically possible. So the way you can nav about, navigate about this uh, environment is using the mouse wheel. If you press the mouse wheel and drag left and right, you'll see that that means that you can pan the view of uh, what you're looking at. If you press the shift key on the keyboard and do the same, you'll notice it rotates or orbits. So basically I keep my left hand um, on the shift key or near the shift key and I use my right hand. And then if you scroll down on the mouse wheel, you'll zoom in, you scroll back, it'll go in and out. So using those three key commands, you can pretty much get anywhere you want um, within this sort of 3D environment. Um, but what you can see is the drawing is actually only in 2D at the moment, but what we're going to build is eventually a 3D model. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I need to build the geometry. So I need to assign uh, or create uh, the uh, floors and things like that. So what we're going to be using are various functions here that you can see in the mode uh, options on the right hand side. Um, now, if I select the whole drawing, if I select off of it, it doesn't select anything. If I select one of the lines, it will select the whole drawing. Um, now, if I select find region, um, and you'll notice if I hop on my mouse over, it has this thing in brackets here, um, R, that's a short keyboard shortcut. So if I select this, um, it can find it, but also if I just click R on the keyboard, it'll also do it. That's really useful if you're building something, you want to do it more quickly. So I've clicked on find region and you'll notice that what it does, it, in, it identifies all the enclosed regions and I can click on them. And what I want to do is uh, I want to assign the floors. So I'm going to select this area, which is going to be a classroom. I'm going to press the shift key and also select the corridor next to it and also this floor. So I'll do that again. So select this with the shift key, uh, right click, right click. And once it's selected multiple of these objects, I'm going to right click, generate floor. Basically, that creates a floor. That's a way to create the floor. Um, I then need to create this as a stair. So I'm going to select all of these objects. If you go from bottom right to top left, it will select them. If you go from top left to bottom right, um, you'll notice it won't select anything. To, to use that, you have to enclose all the objects. Um, so that does it like that. And then I'm going to right click, generate, and then I'm going to create a stair. So that's looking good. Um, I then want to create these desks. These are going to be desks. So I'm going to select all of these desks because I've still got the region select on. You can see find regions and then right click generate and I'm going to hit barrier. 
So barriers are essentially things which get in the way of people being able to walk through them. Technically, this won't do much. This only really show a visual representation of the desks um, because I've got holes in the floor plate already. Um, but in terms of distance, this is the height that um, the desk will be. I'm going to select one meter. I think that's fine. I'll click uh, continue. Um, and there you can see they've been created. If I select now, if you want to deselect things, generally I just click on escape on the keyboard. And then you can see that it's created these desks and uh, makes it more um, 3D. The next thing I want to do is create the floor. Um, so to do this, I'll select the, the drawing again. And instead of fine region, I'm going to select edit drawing. Now, what that does is it highlights all the lines in yellow and eat the ends of the lines. It'll highlight with a uh, blue uh, sphere. So if I zoom in a bit, you can see this. You can see, you know, lines are created with these blue spheres now i you what you'll find is you can actually select things here and they they get highlighted in red now if you do that you can actually change the locations of lines or points on lines uh, but i don't want to change any of the points on lines on this drawing but I, what i do want to do is select this line that's going to be my door so i'm going to right click on it generate expanded and select link um and then width which is basically the the width of uh the overlap of the uh link i'm uh, one meter is fine i'm gonna hit okay uh, continue and then it creates our link which is essentially going to be our door um so i'm going to move up and i'm going to create another door at the back of the classroom and do exactly the same thing so select right click generate expanded and then link and continue there we go um what i'm going to do now is create the portals to where i want people to start and where i want people to finish so i'm going to deselect everything by selecting uh pressing escape a few times i'm going to click on scene at the top and then i'm going to click on portal and it will create a portal in the middle now it just so happens this portal is created in a reasonable place for me for this where i want this portal um now say i want to move this portal you can click on the arrows up here where you have the transform options and this is these transform options essentially allow you to manipulate move uh different objects so you can see that you can uh, there's a snapping function that snaps to the grid there is a, a translate function which essentially allows you to move things um, there is a rotate function allows you to rotate things, uh, scale, which essentially allows you to expand or contract things. Um, and then there's uh, this option here, which is a mirror function, which allows you to flip things essentially. What I want to use is this uh, translate function. Um, and you'll see what it does. It gives me these three arrows. This essentially allows me to move objects in any uh, X, Y or Z direction. Now, actually, the where this portal is, it's not is in a reasonable location. Um, key thing to note is that um, certain objects like stairs, links and portals, they have this green line going through them. Now, when this green line is highlighted as light green, it means it's within touching distance or touching another object. And generally, if it has one of these green lines, you need it to have this green line to do something. So in this case, if it's got this green line, it means it connected to the floor. That means it can interact with that floor. Um, what I want to do is if I double click on this, it will bring up the properties for the portal and I'm going to call this uh, classroom entry. Now, what you'll what you may have noticed is that the dialog boxes within mass motion don't have a save button. You don't need to click on save. Anything you do is automatically saved, so you can just click cancel and it will be saved. Um, another thing I want to change is the agent placement. So if I were to run this simulation um, when we finished, um, the current distribute for this portal is a long spawn line. That means everybody would be created uh, within this portal, but I don't want that. I want them people to be created randomly on the floor plate. So what I'll do, I'll select this and click on floor. And that means that people will be created across this floor plate. So that's good. Um, I'm now going to create another portal. So follow a similar process. I'm going to click portal at the top and then I'm going to move this portal. Over to this side. This is where I want people to end. Now what now you'll notice that I want to rotate this portal to make it so that it's um, facing the stair. So here I can select the rotate function or press C. 
and it will bring this kind of box up and it allows me to rotate in different axes. So I'm going to move it around to here. And what you'll notice here is that because uh, some of the portal is overlapping the side, it's gone gray. Um, now, what, what that means is I need to move the portal onto the all onto the floor plate and then you can see it goes green. So I'm just going to move it here. Uh, and I think that's probably in a reasonable location. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to call it exit. Right. Um, now I want to, um, this area here is actually going to be a mezzanine level going up. So what I want to do, I'm going to use the shift button. I'm going to select the floor, press shift and select the portal. I'm then going to use the transform function or press V. And then you'll notice that you can move it manually where by pressing these uh, arrow keys but when you move it you'll see these coordinates change and this allows you to be more precise in where you put things so I want this to go three meters high so I'm going to press three and it'll go exactly three meters high and then it's gone three meters up what I'm then going to do I need to connect this stair so to do this I'm going to click on the stair and you'll see it's highlighted I'm then going to go to the object selection options here and select face mesh you can also click on y on your keyboard if, to be a bit quicker this allows me to select different faces of a given object and what i'm going to do i'm going to select uh, using the shift key select the top two triangles so all of the top of the stair is collected i'm going to press uh, i'm going to click on the translate function or press v and then you see that i can move this up now if I press three, this will go exactly to the floor level and it might um, hide some of the top of the stair. So instead, I'm going to click on 3.1 to just get it above the floor. Now, there's a level of tolerance in um, where you position objects. So 0.1 is generally within close enough distance that it will connect the stair. And you'll see here that this is actually the stair is actually connected because I've got the light green arrow. So that's pretty much most of the objects that I want to create for this example. Um, now I just need to create an evacuation event just to set things up. And to do that, I will select the activities tab at the top. I will then select the evacuate option here. And this will bring up a new object. You'll see that an object is created here called evacuate. And I need to define origins, which is basically where I want people to start. And I'll select this and it will bring me up the portals and I want people to start in a cl the classroom entry. I'll click OK and then the destinations. I select the arrow and I want to people to aim to go for the exits. Now you can select multiple exits if you have more than one exit in your simulation and then agents would then make their decision about which way to go uh, based on the, um, the utility function it uses for route selection. But here I'm just going to click OK. Um, you can also change the numbers of people here, so you can either an agent total, agent per origin. So if you have multiple origins, you could you could define that. Um, but I think 100 people is absolutely fine for what I want at the moment. So everything looks OK there. I'm going to click uh, close. And then I just need to run the simulation. So here I will click on simulation and analysis and at the top left is run simulation so i will click on run simulation and then it brings up this launch new simulation uh dialog box um now the thing i need to do is to define where i want the output of the simulation stored so i'll click on this dialog box um, and i need to place decide where i'm going to save uh the uh, simulation file so i'm going to save it here and i'm just going to call it test um, and this basically writes your results to an MMDB file, which is a mass motion database file. So I'll just click save and then it just writes the dialogue, uh, the file location here. You might want to change the simulation run name um, to wh whatever you like, but I'm going to keep for default run at the moment. And I think we're ready, so we'll click on run. And then what is displayed is a run dialogue box. And it's happened very quickly because it's quite a a uh, quick simulation to run um, but if we scroll up you'll see it has at different clock times one minute two minute three minutes 
pop is the number of people in the simulation and then you can see at, at one minute it's 54 people but at two minutes it's zero people and so on this is quite useful because if you have problems with your simulation maybe a per one person is getting stuck um, you can actually identify it here but everything looks okay um, the number of people created is 100 the number of people completed with excess is 100 so it's all good so i'm going to click close and what that does, it creates this simulation run object within your uh, mass motion file. And because that's being displayed, I can just play that using this video player down below. So I'm going to click play. And then it creates the people. And then what you're seeing is a replay of the simulation which has just run. Um, so this this is when you're looking at this, the simulation has already run and you're watching a playback. Um, now, the reason that's important is because you can use this slider to go forward and back um, if you wanted to go go to a specific point within the simulation. Um, so this is already run and what you're watching is a replay. Um, and this is quite a useful feature because you might want to go jump to certain points um, and you see the time going up and down. So if I play it, you can also change the speed at which the simulation is run. So five times because um, sometimes people are moving a bit slower than um, you perhaps want. Um, this isn't changing the speed of the modeling, it is just spading the the speed at which you replay. So you can see people are queuing for the stair, they go up the stair and go to the exit. So that's looking great. Um, so say I want to have a look at the levels of congestion. Um, one thing I might I can do is use the maps function here in the simulation analysis tab. So if I click on maps and then look uh, to select the instantaneous density, this allows me to show the levels of crowd density for floor objects. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select all um, everything, um, but it's essentially all clocks, mainly for the floor objects. And then in the surface object box, I'm going to click add. Um, this will uh, this will select all the objects, and then I'm going to click evaluate. And what that does is um, for the run, for the replay file, it'll then assess the levels of congestion, and display them on those floor objects and also on the stair object. And then what well, if I play this again, you'll see the people are sh shown, um, but you'll see underneath them there's different colors and they are reflective of the different levels of service, which is essentially the different levels of density. Um, you can replay this and if, if you want to hide your people to just look at the congestion, you can select one person or you can select here a right click and click on hide and that hides the people. And then if you play it, you can see the levels of congestion. Um, so levels of congestion are around Fru Fruin's level of service F. Um, so they're generally higher levels of congestion, which is not really desirable for extended periods of time. So that's the demonstration of mass motion and uh, thank you very much.